Let me tell you about the radical generosity of Denver's Angel of Charity. Judy O'Greedy was a woman born into slavery in Missouri, and she had an extremely difficult upbringing. She witnessed the beating of her mother at the hands of a slave driver, and she was even blinded when her face was caught by a whip. Julia was freed from slavery at the end of the Civil War, and shortly afterwards she moved to the Denver area. She was received into the Catholic faith at Sacred Heart Church, and from then onwards, her radical charity and generosity would begin to inspire the whole city of Denver. When she wasn't working, Julia was out begging and obtaining goods for other people. She knew exactly what other people needed. So she would beg for food when other people needed food. She would beg for items when other people needed items. Things for babies and children and clothing for the elderly. One day she was even seen out and about carrying a mattress upon her back for a family that needed it. I mean, can you believe it? This old woman who was in constant pain walking the local neighborhood with her little red wagon behind her, dragging it along, begging for those who were in need, and distributing these, these goods to the poorest of the poor, secretly dropping things off so as not to embarrass those who she was helping. No one was ever turned away from Julia, and this generosity meant that she was swindled many times. But with the wisdom of the saints, Julia knew that it was more blessed to give than to receive. And this reminded me of uh, an interview that Fulton Sheen's niece gave. And in that, she said that Fulton Sheen was always asked for money and he would always, without fail, give money to those who asked. And she, won she once asked him, uh, what if someone was lying to you? And he said, I can't take the risk. I cannot take the risk. So why did Julia Greedy and Fulton Sheen see it as so vital to continue giving to others, even at the risk of being lied to or swindled? Because the bigger risk is not given at all. Jesus said in Matthew's gospel, he said, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Truly I say to you, as you did it, to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Julia Greeley and Fulton Sheen saw the next person in need as Jesus in need. There is only one known photo of Julia that exists and there's a wonderful story that's attached to it. Julia had uh, befriended a couple, George and Agnes, uh, who she had helped over the years. And she noticed that they didn't have a child. So she asked them about this and they said that they had struggled to conceive. So Julia said, uh, never mind that. This time next year, you will have a baby. Sure enough, a year later, they had a baby, a baby daughter, and they called her Marjorie. And Julia loved this baby. She would visit her them every day and teach Marjorie how to pray. One of the types of prayer that she taught Marjorie was to pray the rosary. So the one picture we have of Julia is her holding baby Marjorie in her arms while baby Marjorie is holding a rosary in her hands. Julia was also incredibly courageous in sharing the faith of other people. And there was one group of people who she particularly loved to share the faith with and that was firefighters. She saw there to be a particular need to share the faith with them, to prepare them for what was to come in their lives, in their, in their obligations and their duty for caring for other people. So she shared the gospel with them in order to prepare them for this way. Julia loved her local Sacred Heart Church. She would go there daily for mass. And she also loved the Sacred Heart devotion, which is a devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, recognizing the great love that Jesus has for each and every one of us, and his call to deeper conversion and love of him. And Julia loved other people out of the great love that she received from Jesus. And as a fitting capstone to her life, Julia died on the feast day of the Sacred Heart of Jesus on the 7th of June, 1918. Julia didn't seek attention for herself so that 
in her life, it wasn't known how much she had done for other people. But when she died, so many people came to the funeral that there was a, a queue for people to come and pay their respects to her, a queue which lasted five hours. Julia is a great example of how we as Christians are called to witness to our faith in word and in deed. What we learn from Julia's life is that you do not have to be rich to be generous. Julia certainly wasn't rich, but she was extremely generous. And she was creative in the way that she would raise um, funds in order to look after other people. There's this really funny moment in Julia's life where there is this beauty pageant and people would enter into the competition and whoever won would get a share of the, of the winnings. And people would buy a token and then they'd vote for who they thought was the most beautiful. Well, Julia decided to enter into this competition as well. And she completely wiped the floor with her competition, taking home first prize and the, a share in, the, in that money, which she then used to help look after other people. Julia was crowned beautiful in that competition. And that is what she is. She is a beautiful witness of Jesus. She allowed the love of God to flow into her life and out to all those who she encountered. When we look at this old, frail woman with a scarred face and a blind eye, someone who was in constant pain, we look at her and we see the sheer beauty of God's love shining through her. Servant of God, Julia Greeley, pray for us.